Hi everybody, welcome back to the button list with Allison and Heather. Um, I never realized those lights were quite so bright behind me, but uh, welcome back to our Ask Us Anything podcast because... Do we even turn them off? No, I don't think so. I just never realized they were quite so like... Um, yes, we are both drowning in work, so... We're doing an Ask Me Anything or Ask Us Anything so that we can chat and work at the same time. <clears throat> Heather, are you ready to be on stream? Sure. Okay. So, there is the header. Hello. And there is the full screen header. Oh, my. There's, yes. You get a whole screen all to yourself. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because you have a public. I you have a fan club. I, I, I think you could have stopped with I have a fan <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> I'm your fan. I know. I know, boo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, it, since it's an ask me anything, that means we have created zero content for this evening. So, help. Ask us stuff. Peace. Otherwise, we're just going to sit here and work. Otherwise, we're just going to sit here and work. We make things, and that's going to be sad. Well, you know, I don't want to loudly so. make I well, I'm gonna have to hammer some stuff. So Allison is definitely loud. There will definitely things. be some loudly making happening, and I have to drill some things. I'm having an avalanche, so so loudly making is gonna happen. <laughs> We're definitely both gonna loudly make avalanche. Okay. Oh, also, I'm gonna have to drill awesome. some things. Which things? The woods. <laughs> oh yeah, they are. It's true. Okay, so let's let's wait for the crowd to warm up a little bit. So, let's see. Heather. Yes. Oh. That's something interesting about you that I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. I, I don't actually know the answer to that because <laughs> it's always a surprise when you don't know something. This is true. Okay. Um... um Uh, what was your favorite subject in school besides calculus? Ah, good question. Um, I always said English, but really it was all the arts things that I took. So, you know, band and dance and mm -hmm. um, drama. Um, and history is the thing I do most now, so... Mm-hmm. So English. <laughs> what? No, that's not the answer, though. You just said that's not the answer. Well, I know. It is what I always said. I, okay, I but I didn't really... ask you what you always said. I asked you what was True. actually. I majored in English and creative writing. I do love writing. And I love, I love reading, but... I don't... It depends on the group of people I'm discussing. I'm listening, I'm just walking to get something. Well, that's here. Because reading into a work of fiction is not that much fun with just anyone. Well, and it's interesting. So, this kind of takes me in a tangential direction, if anybody doesn't mind that. That was terrible grammar. Strangely enough, English was also my favorite subject in school after dance. But, um, so there's this whole, there's this whole process and God bless me, I cannot remember who, it, it's a, it's a fairly well-known, but not super well-known dancer choreographer who started this, but it's called, it's basically a, a framework for giving feedback to people to artists who might be a little sensitive. What? Um, and no. so there's like, there are like defined steps of like the first thing, you know, like the first thing you say is, I have an opinion, would you like to hear it? Mm. And then if they say yes, then you can say your opinion or you can even be more specific and you can say, you know, I have an opinion about the staging 
would you like to hear it? I have an opinion about the flow. Would you like to hear it? Like, so you can even specify. So, and, and just because the artist says yes one time doesn't mean like you have to ask every single time. And it's, it's more complicated than that, but I'm not going to lie. It's been a hot minute since I was in college. So I don't remember all of it, but that's, that's what I rem remember the most is like that, which is interesting because it's, it's totally, um, I, we, Heather told me I had to hurry. I did. Uh, but it's really interesting because it's actually exploring or not exploring, but reinforcing the idea of consent. Like it's pretty interesting. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, I will. Um, at some point, I will do some more research and remember, or I'll just message one of my college buddies and be like, "Hey," especially the ones that still work in the field, and be like, "Hey, what was that thing, and who was it by?" And then I'll research more. But yeah, it, it's really, and and there are a lot of people who who found it very laborious, and of course, you know, there were a lot of a lot of people who are like, well, just, just, you know, develop a tougher skin and this and that, which tends to be the attitude in the dance world generally. But I really thought it was interesting and yeah, that's, very, that's very, so, very useful. Because also if you, as an artist, like if you get too much feedback too quickly you that you can't absorb it. And if it's, if it hurts you, then a lot of us just shut down. Yeah. And then we're like, we don't want any, nope, no more feedback. Like, done, done, bye, see ya. 100%. Yeah. So it's a really great framework. And I need another tool. So okay. you probably should make us the same size. Okay, I can do that. Did I come back? I mean, you can leave me as your minion, but. I can't do it now. Well, ready. I know. What I need to do is I just need to create, actually, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to create a button. We'll, we'll be right back. Because that way I don't have to think about it. Okay. I mean, you're the star, but we're an ensemble. An we're an ensemble cast. Come on. I think I need a band aid for my stab wound. Why did you stab wound yourself exactly? Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time, you know? Okay. It's just getting in the way. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so now there is a button list scene where Heather and I are the same size. And... And I'm back. With the name. Oh, I need to get more band-aids. We are definitely... Oh, that's really large. Wow. Corvus, that image is huge. <laughs> it's bigger than all of us. I mean, great resolution. <laughs> right? See, yes, Corvus gets it. Sorry for the producing on the fly, but... It's my fault. We can blame me. We can blame Heather. It's true. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, just blame the fact that, like, I don't have a brain cell to rub together with another brain cell these days. And so if I don't do it when I'm thinking about it, it is not getting did. So now it has been done. By my hand, and for the good of the state, the bearer has done what has been done. So, um, all right, so we're still waiting for questions, y'all. Yeah, so, you're really falling down on that job. Yeah. I mean, I know Kenneth said that he was thinking. So, okay. What is, what is the largest regulation size mailbox you can have in Walker County. <laughs> I'm assuming that, okay, did, I did, I did tell the, you did tell about the, the cement and the mm -hmm. I-beams and everything. Yes. I mean, I feel like it's gotta be smaller than a 
standard post office box. Um, I I think maybe something the the size of a VW or smart car might be allowable. Um, do you think that could stand up to Kenneth's road though? Well, it's it's kind of the wild west there on the Kenneth's road. road construction. People seem to have a vendetta of some sort. Yeah. So I don't know what to do about that. But can you um, get like a titanium? Mailbox. I'm still going with the two layers with cement in between. I think that's tried and true yeah. and mounted on an I beam. <laughs> so, um, so how is the mailbox situation? Uh, I'm assuming still not good. Mailbox non present. Oh no! Oh, that's terrible. And you know the city is not going to pay for that. No. Because you shouldn't have had your mailbox by the side of the street. How dare you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, um, mailbox. So one of the one of the reasons that that my grandfather did the the reason he did the double layer um, was mailbox smashers, but the main reason he did the I beam that was sunk, like. 18 inches into the concrete in the ground like he he sunk it down he made a concrete like foot and then sunk the i-beam into there was because of the snow plows because they they plow the streets and they kick up all of the snow and eventually the snow gets so high that you can't see the damn mailbox anymore and then the snow plow runs into your mailbox and bye bye mailbox except for he managed to actually snow proof snow plow proof the mailbox Pretty good. So go engineering skills. Um, wow. Okay. Corva says she knows that the last couple of months has been a lot. Um, do I like owning a store? And Heather, do you like managing a store? And if we weren't doing this, what would we be doing? So who wants to start? That is a serious question. Well, I'm going to say... I love managing Allison's business. Um, I don't know if managing a store is like my life's dream. Managing Allison's store is. So I I am glad that I am not as customer facing <laughs> more right now. I, <laughs> have more sanity because of it. Um, I really like facing the customers on the internet. Y'all are amazing. <laughs> um, so I will not regret anything about being here with Allison. And I am at her service until she really doesn't need me. Well, that's going to be never, so well, we're going to be in the old folks' home together. Okay. And Corvus is going to come take care of us. Yes. Um, and we'll teach her stuff because we'll still know things. Exactly. Until we can't remember them anymore. We'll still remember the things. We just don't, we won't remember Corvus. Fair. That's probably true. Um, so let's see. I will say it is a lot, and there are definitely so many aspects of owning a store that I love. I I don't necessarily love all the customers, but I like the nice ones. I love being able to, and this is going to sound completely hokey, but like spread joy and happiness through beads because it, it really does give me joy when somebody leaves here in a better mood than they were in when they got here. Um, you know, the the problem, of course, is there are all kinds of other aspects of it that are not so uh, warm and fuzzy. And those, so sometimes those put me in a bad mood or an exhausted place or a place where I fell asleep on the desk in the back last Saturday instead of doing a free form. Uh, so it's a very mixed bag for me. Excellent. We have Corvus on our side. Yay. Yay. I mean, I would say having a retail storefront right now is extremely difficult because the pandemic just 
took the push towards online and just gave it a boot in the ass. Yes. And so, you know, and then everything was so crazy for so long and it's so crazy. So coming back from that is difficult. And this is after coming back from, and now we're in a recession, but like coming back from a recession right after I bought the business and, you know, coming back from the government shutdown and like all of the hardships, like it's been a long road. And um, if I knew then what I knew now, would I do it again? I honestly don't know. But there's a reason that young and stupid people do the crazy awesome things is because they don't know any better. Um, so if I, so if I had gone the other way, because I had, I've got, I had two, two paths basically in front of me. Uh, two roads diverged. Two me. roads, yes. Um, about 16 years ago. Um, so one of them was to buy Beating Dreams and one of them was to go to, to San Diego and go to bench jewelry school and become an actual bench jeweler, uh, you know, setting stones and, <laughs> and all of that. And, um, I had just gotten out of, or not gotten out of, but I had just been ejected from a relationship at that time. And I was really just in kind of a, I want to, you know, I would just want to burn everything to the ground and drive, but you know, I want to take my money and I want to sell all my stuff and take my cats and put them in carriers and buy a Mercedes convertible and drive cross country to San Diego and go to jewelry school. Um, so that was definitely a really prominent thing in my mind. And instead I just, in a somewhat questionable decision, I decided to buy a bead shop with my mother. So I, I will also say that owning the shop was easier before my mother was living in Dallas. Yes. And that on top that's of- That's not entirely your mom's fault, just because she moved here during the pandemic, but oh my goodness, it's so much harder. I'm gonna have to stay late tonight and clean. It is, it's so much harder now that she's the, she's here. Um, so I will say that that's you know been a lot of, again, cumulative buildup over the past few years. So I, I would say if I knew, if I'd known then what I know now, I might not, I might not have not done it, but I think I would have done it differently for sure. Um, so if I hadn't bought the store, hopefully I would be a successful bench jeweler employed somewhere in the United States. Uh, at this point, you know, with the knowledge that I've gained from owning the store, like I see other pathways, you know, branching out as far as design, consulting, things like that. And that's something that would never have been, I think, open to me if I had not owned the store, because despite the fact that I am constantly exhausted and sometimes unreasonably bitchy and stuff, uh, I have learned so much over the past 16 years. And I continue to learn every day. And almost all of us know to see And I really think we should put her in a cat carrier in a car and then send her to San Diego. I don't think she deserves San Diego. Let's send her somewhere else. Wyoming? Yeah. I don't know that Wyoming deserves her either, but they're... Okay, where really deserves my... Florida! Let's send her to Florida. <gasps> Florida deserves her. Florida deserves my mother. Sorry, all my sure. friends in Florida. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that was actually a really good question, Corvus. We forgive you for getting serious for a minute there. All right, who has another question? Hee, hee, hee. Florida is perfect. It's true. In that way that that's where all the cursed people can go. Let's put a big sign on her. I don't know. Gay, 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 gay. gay. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I'll work on this. Dee, 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 dee. Okay, Heather, do you have a question for me? Hmm. Yes, we do know about permanent jewelry that is our quality. Oh, yes. So, again, to each their own. Like, I'm not going to harsh on anyone's mellow. I don't. <laughs> All right, Kenneth first thing, Corvus. I don't get it. 
I really don't understand. Like, but I don't I have to. Don't love and enjoy so much of it every single day. Well, I mean, I a couple things. I used to my other bracelets before I had the like attack of the killer fire ants and had to take them off while it healed. So, I mean, I have my permanent jewelry. I have my bangles that I wear all the time, once again, except when my wrists have been eaten alive by fire ants. I, I will say that I realized that, because I can, I know how to use a laser arc welder. So I realized that it's not really a dangerous machine. And even if it zaps you in the skin, you're not going to get hurt because it's a really small pulse. But it bothers me that so, like, there are a lot of really reputable professional jewelry shops who are who are getting on board with this trend and that's great there are also a lot of what i would call dilettante business people who are like oh i'm gonna buy an arc welder and we're gonna do pop-ups and now i'm gonna make permanent jewelry like that's that's a little concerning to me just because you know the word welder is involved but um i mean hopefully nobody gets you know burned to a crisp and nobody gets sued and we're not going to start doing it we did have one inquiry for um doing semi-permanent jewelry that did not involve an arc welder which we definitely can do with wire wrapping um but that didn't pan out so we're just kind of staying away from that um i don't know i just well first of all buying an arc welder is expensive that's why I'm calling like anybody who's not part of a professional shop is somebody who is, has, you know, a couple thousand dollars of just spare cash just sitting around, which I wish I had that. Like, I'm not knocking that, but I think we're just going to stay away from it. Also, I don't think for us, I don't think that the trend is going to last long enough for us to recoup the investment in the arc welder. So the other, uh, okay, Corvus's fun question. Did you have anything to say about permanent jewelry, Hunter? Not my thing. Got it. I mean, if I ever get married, I guess that'll be permanent jewelry, but technically I could take it off. Yes. Oh, these got all garrody. That's no good. If anyone's wondering what on earth I keep doing with my arms and things like that. Um, ah, interesting. Well, um, a, a big, like, I don't know, a proper one is, is expensive, so that's fair. They have the little ones. Yeah. But just, oof. Yeah. But I'm starting the flags tomorrow at home and so I am warping my limbs in advance while we talk to you which was Allison's idea and I think it was brilliant and I thank y'all and also apparently I'm doing three streams next week yeah <laughs> so <laughs> I might have forgotten to tell her that y'all oops it's okay it's on the schedule oh okay so that was what actually started the thread with uh, my friend Rhonda was, um, there was an, a mass email that went out from an organization that um, a number of my friends are associated with, and it started with the word oops, except they spelled it O-P-P-S. Ops. Ops. And, and that was what started the whole grammar word writing discussion. Generally, I do not care how your language is when you are communicating casually. It really only starts to bother me in a professional setting. And even in a professional setting, I can forgive a lot of it if it's just, you know, person to person. Mm -hmm. But if you can misspell your sign <laughs> that you paid for, someone has failed you. Yeah. And it might not be you. It's okay if, if you were failed by someone else. Um, I also, I read a lot, and not all of the books that I read are super well edited, and 
there are some times when I'm like, I know, Laurel K. Hamilton, that you have a lot of people to edit your books. Why are there typos in your novels? I know they want to get them to press as soon as possible. But give it two more days? I mean, I can give you some line at, I don't mind. I'm okay. <laughs> yes, I will finish. I will edit your book. But yeah, I... I I was read. It was a terrible romance. Heather's a really good copy editor. By I am the way. actually. Um, I was reading a terrible romance. I'm pretty sure it was a paranormal romance. You know, I I read popcorn books, and I love that because what I do with my reading these days is I'm not feeding my brain. I am giving my brain a new place to go. So one page of my book had the word, well, yeah, I mean, Corvus, you have like 97 excuses, which is why you should have an editor. I, I'm not actually even blaming the authors. I'm blaming the people who are paid to do the thing. Super's here! Yay! Hey, but seriously, are, like, how long have people been writing entire books with AI? Because I think it's longer than we think. I think it is a little longer than we think. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Well, we should still have chat here. Okay. Yes. Yay! Super sees us! Yay! We back. But yeah, the the main thing so all on the same page. The author used three different forms of the, the word peaked, and all three were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, there were peaked nipples that were like P I Q U E D. So, so they, they were, were interested. They were very interested. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's kind of true, but I still don't think that was the word they were looking for. <laughs> and then someone peaked at something. P E A K E D. And then, um, you know, after the, the nipples, um, someone peaked. <laughs> so it's P E K E D. And again, I wouldn't <laughs> care if you sent this to me as a friend or something like that. I'd be like, awesome. That's great. No notes. But if you were like, okay, I'm going to publish this tomorrow, I'd be like, but, <laughs> three notes. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I mean, do you not have beta readers? I know you have beta readers. You thanked your beta readers in the forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just write about your interested nipples from now on. <laughs> I will say one of one of the funnest things is the, like subtitling. Oh and my things. gosh! Subtitle. I want to have that job sometime. Someday <laughs> I really do. Like my absolute favorite part of subtitles is when they describe the sound. And describing the sounds is just amazing. Like, my very favorite example ever was an episode of Grimm. And if you don't, if you haven't ever watched Grimm, which is not on the air anymore, but you can still watch it. It's amazing. And there's a scene where a character is running down a hallway being chased by a whole crowd of people. And the subtitles say, obstreperous shouting. Oh, goodness. Yes. Well. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> That's awesome, Corvus. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was going to start with glory holes. But... Yeah, I, I really I enjoy spicy kids. Yes. <laughs> um, oh hmm, let's see. 
I mean, there's definitely seeing stars, assuming that everyone is, you know, performing to the best of their ability. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that one was obvious. They, yeah, I, I totally <laughs> missed that one. Um, be super, I knew it would be pink. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, what else? The mouth is too busy. He's got um, here, so. Binary stars? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Red giants. <laughs> White dwarfs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, just, I read that on the Facebook. Yeah. New supermoon tonight. Oh, that also explains all the traffic. Oh, yeah. Um... I almost had a wreck at the tollway today. Do you know why? Because someone from the right lane was turning onto the tollway. Yeah. And for reference, those of you who are following along on the computer, there are three lanes, a turn lane, and then you turn onto the tollway. So that was fun. Yeah. Oh, people, people, people. Also, the others. Yes. I mean, moon. Just moon, yeah. Super moon. Super moon with black hole. Orion's belt. <clears throat> Bear. <laughs> hmm. Unfortunately, lately, I've been the one that's hitting people. I'm really trying to fix that. Well, in this case, I was very lucky that I was not in the middle of a four-car pileup. Because it was a green light, and everyone was going, until suddenly this car yeah. was like, zooming through. And it was on the overpass, too, that they decided this. Of course. So there's yeah. no, like, shoulder or easement or anything to get out of the damn way no and there's also like 15 feet i mean it's it's not yeah. that far it's more than 15 feet but it's not that far it's not that far i can verify because i drive that route as well so super is saying don't go there right super yeah. where do you live i will not go there california okay so, um, oh, so I did not know that there was a town in Texas called Fate. Yes. Because the, um, the client who uh, paid in full for a fairly generous order of stringing, uh, she's like, but it's hard for me to get here because I live out in Fate. And I'm like, okay. <clears throat> but the funny thing is she lives on McKinney Avenue in Fate, Texas. Oh, that's funny. Didn't, didn't know that McKinney went all the way over there. But I know, right? Okay. That's true, Super. Especially if you have a trailer on it. Heather, do you want to start with Corvus's question? I like to hope. California driving? Oh, girl, you've never driven in Dallas. <laughs> We're both working on manufacture. The Dallas people in, when we went to Chicago for a dance event and were driving around, all of us were like, wow, it's so easy to drive here. And the people from Chicago were like, not going to Texas. <laughs> 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 um, but yes, California driving is something else. In Texas, I need a you have to win while you're driving. And it's a how to win is different in everybody's mind. But yeah, when I lived in the Bay Area, I carried absolutely insane liability insurance because it was everybody around me was driving an expensive car. So, because I was in the Bay Area. 
So he's like, if I hit somebody with my Saturn, it's going to be at least a Porsche. <laughs> I don't want to pay for that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Bay Area is pretty terrible. Um, so the actual question... <laughs> Okay, the the actual really, question is, do you believe that black tourmaline will protect you from crazy drivers? Uh, well, okay. So I have black tourmaline in my car now, and it is not protecting me from crazy drivers, but I have had fewer weird things happen. Like, Interesting. I mean, I'm granted I've been off for most of two weeks, but I haven't texted you at, you know, 1238 being like, there's a moving truck still behind me, or none That's of the gates true. were to my apartment complex. I can't get out, or something like that, which happened much more frequently than it should. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you're going to brake, you should at least brake in the open direction, <laughs> because braking in the closed direction is, I feel like I was kidnapped. <laughs> Okay, so uh, my take on crystal healing is I I would love it if it were all true and we could yeah. all fix ourselves with crystals, but I think that crystals help us get in touch with those parts of our brain that do help us fix ourselves, and that is beneficial. Yes. I mean, if I could just wear some amethyst and not get drunk, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Fair. Um, I love the ritual of I think that's really cool. I love ritual in general. Like, my brain is so built for religion. Okay, I had two chain nose, and now I only have one. I don't quite know. Do you want one um, that's sitting right here to plow? No, clearly not. No. It's so close, and yet she had to run away for another one. Allison just really likes leaving the stream, I think. <laughs> I'm back now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, to answer Kenneth's question, we are both doing manufacture. I am doing assembly of a lot of different pieces, and Heather is about to start the Great Flag Extravaganza of 2023. So I am warping looms so I can begin that at home tomorrow. And we, we settled on, I'm aiming for 10, but really I should get 15. Um, no, we settled on you're aiming for 12, but we're planning for 10. Okay. Okay, so 20 it is. Okay. I mean, whatever. Well, I have two days to do them, and well, then... You don't have two days to do not all of them. We still have a month. Yeah, but you're gone for a week at a month. I know, but you can have more time after I get back. Okay. I mean, hell, if you get 20 done, then rock and roll, but... But don't beat myself up. Things that remind us of ways to not be like things are right now, if that makes sense, are good. Like, yes. Plus, rocks are pretty, so. Rocks know. are awesome. I love them. It's a win win. Yeah. <laughs> How much do you like flags? Oh, goodness. Okay, so I'm going to answer this for me. And then Allison can say how much she likes flags. Um, I love flags. I I mean, I am not going to say I love the design. It is, a, it is a really good design. It's not my style. Um, I love making them. I love it. I could do it all day, every day. I only do it all day, some days, <laughs> but 
Um, also, we are paid generously for the flag. So it is worth our time. As much time as it takes. Um, I don't know that Allison loves the flag so much because because I bugger about them early on, but there's never any time, and then suddenly it's always a scramble at the end, and that's no fun. And nobody likes that. I mean, Allison, of course, doesn't like it, because it takes me away, and I'm important. And I know this. But at least I'm making money while I'm away. Um, we like flags so much more now that we don't lose them anymore. <laughs> that year was the war. I didn't like flags that year either. That was, that was a bad time. Um, <clears throat> I do try to make donations absolutely every time I have to do these flags because I have to do so many Confederate flags. So I, I try to make donations to groups of people, indigenous and other melanated people who kind of got screwed over. Um, since I can't believe that I'm still <laughs> promulgating this culture in 2023, but I am, because heritage, and yeah. Corvus, you and me both, let's not find the same one. Then. I mean, if you could find one that would take care of both of you. That's true. That's true. We just need patrons. I have a patron in the game. He calls me Little Bird, it's so cute. He sends me resources. Grow bigger. And no, obviously, super is not for my name. <laughs> <laughs> and is anyone a Tenacious D fan? was having ideas with the capital I right there. I could see them through the computer. Wow. Mm. Through the computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have I ever been to sugardaddy.com? Oh, goodness gracious. This sounds, this no. sounds like a bad road. Sounds like a road that I don't think I want to go down. <laughs> I think I have. You tried it out? How? Okay, Corvus, please share. Yes. <laughs> please share we, your experience we with us. We really need to have a Corvus AMA. Yes. <laughs> well, duh. I mean, Ashley Madison is kind of. Or what? I, is it is it still a thing? I don't know. I don't but know what it is. For I'm cheers. Not but a lot of them were looking for someone to set up on the side. Huh. I mean, if it's a thing in real life, chances are very good it's a, it's thing, a thing on, on the, the internet. internet. Corvus, I feel like you're too outspoken to have a sugar daddy. Yeah. Just saying. That. Or he just fell desperately in love with you and they take you on trips. Do they sometimes take 17 year olds on trips across state lines and. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a no for me also. I mean, if I didn't have to do anything, sure, I'd be a sugar baby, and you could have as many others as you wanted. 
<laughs> but, but again, you called a patron. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do they have a list or <laughs> like check boxes? If you're like willing, willing, no, no, you can't be quiet and smile. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, that's that's not our Corvus. I've seen you with scissors and like, actual scissors and metal. <laughs> Super, there was a in Corvus streams as well, and there was <laughs> one of her games where she, she had a pair of scissors she got in one of the bins out front at the grocery store, and she was cutting metal sheet with it <laughs> through sheer cussedness, it not through anything else other than force of will and yeah no she's not the sorry corvus you're not really the sugar baby type no offense <laughs> yeah I, mean, well, I think maybe they meant aluminum foil <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with i don't think they were meaning the kind of metal that you thought they were meaning. <laughs> you made it work, so I guess it is for metal in the right hand. <laughs> but who oh boy, girl. So we we sent her a pair of shears. <laughs> I'm sorry, you are just too long. You are getting cut off. I think I am too long though. Well, you are great. You could be a pitch person for sure, and then you wouldn't even have to be a sugar baby. I think I'm just long enough. So, okay, well, this wire is too long. <laughs> Super, you actually for a first purchase, you can get your bracelet anytime because we will ship the first purchase regardless of how much it is but we're okay with selling you something else we're having a sale tomorrow night and we're having a lot of we're having a 50 percent off sale tomorrow night i'm just saying because you need your bracelet and your fish feed. jason momoa corvus i did post the loincloth video in in our discord our Avengers Discord the other day. It just casually came up in conversation, you know. Uh, like he does? There was something about a loincloth, and I was like, ah, Jason Momoa! <laughs> of course. Because, I mean, what? If you're going to think about a loincloth, you, you should always also think about Jason Momoa in one. I'm just. Agreed. You know, My guess is on the May instead of the May not. He, you know what? It's it's a loincloth. You don't even gotta fill it out. That's fair. It just you know yeah. it's crazy. Sorry. I'm remembering <laughs> I mean he's got just perfect cheeks <laughs> perfect it's rather rude of him actually should really be illegal for Jason Momoa to wear not one <laughs> Although he's okay in jeans. I'm sure Corvus agrees. I would be more jealous of his hair if I didn't pretty much have his hair. 
but his hair is pretty amazing. It's true. Y'all, my hair is doing a thing, and I don't know what happened, but over the past three weeks, I cannot sleep and wake up in the morning with my hair pulled up. It, it should be protected, but I wake up in the morning and I have the biggest mess to comb out. And I think I might have to start sleeping in a bonnet. Like, I do not have 4C hair. This is not a thing that should be happening to me. Why am I making white person mats in my hair overnight? What am I doing? Maybe I need a camera. I'll make a TikTok of, of me flopping around enough to <laughs> I can't sleep you all crazy these days. It's just me. <laughs> just me. It's not like there's anyone there. You're sleeping with Jason Momoa, aren't you? I didn't want to say anything in front of Corvus. Come on. <laughs> it's just mean. <laughs> my glasses on. Read aloud. Kenneth says, what if I was sleeping with him? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Completely okay. and totally. A plus 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 for Spicy Kenneth. Please. Yes. Please. please all the time. Please bring the Spicy Kenneth all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but Corvus what what if he were really in love with me? She'd still murder or you. Or Kenneth. <laughs> She'd still murder you. I know. But she would war in her head because she does want us to be happy. As she murders us. Okay, so it sounds like we're having, what, like a cell block tango scenario going on? Yes! Here. Yeah! They had it come. <laughs> They had it coming. <laughs> they had it coming all along. See? I would still murder you. I just would feel bad. Yep. I knew it. They had it coming. <laughs> he ran into my knife ten times. <laughs> Someday we will do a musical. I know, we will. I just have to, like, have enough brain cells to write one. That's going to be really hard. Well, no, no it's, it's going to be... Well, we're not doing an original musical. We're doing no, a... No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a condensed version of one that already exists. Yes, of course. But it's going to be amazing. <laughs> but if I pick one that we know most of the songs from already, both of us, then... Yeah. That's going to be easier. I'm still going to have to study. That's because you're a lot in of overage. I know the songs, like, I can sing along in my car, but if there's someone in my car, I don't want to sing along because my words are sometimes just what comes well, out. Well, but I mean, I'll write condensed versions of the songs, but if we, if you know the tune, <laughs> like... Disney? Like, I don't know. A whole new world? <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course not. Mm. Oh, I've gone too far. Have, go with have I? I don't know. Have you? How far is too far? I do know the answer to that. It's it's outside of the pen lines. 
it is outside of this one mine. I am done with this one. I didn't go too far. I went the right far. Woo! Good job. I feel like, why are you gross? I don't like you. I feel like this is gonna have to wait. Any more questions? Ooh, I have a I have a question for Allison. Oh dear. Okay, shoot. Okay, assuming infinite ability and key, what would be your dream role in a musical? Oh wow. Um. Honestly, I think it, and this is a little obscure, but honestly, I think it would be to be absolutely anyone in the musical Moving Out, which was all Billy Joel songs yes. and was choreographed by Twyla Tharp. Yes. And I would give a very, first of all, I love Billy Joel, and I would give a very large chunk of my soul to have just once in my life worked with Ty Twyla Tharp. Yeah. So um, I, that would actually, and I, and I actually auditioned for the tour of that musical, but I did not get cast. That's amazing. Uh, I got, I got to the very, very end of the audition in Houston, but I did not get called to New York. Um, so that actually really, that would have been my, my dream role. How about you? Oh, That is a really interesting question. So, I think I have two answers. The first one is just for the drama and the costumes and the, all of that, Christine Dye. Okay, fair. Because um, there's lots of that. <laughs> yes, and pretty much only that. I mean, you don't have to mm -hmm. really act, just sing really sing high and notes. Sing and scream. Yeah. <laughs> sing and change costumes a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and that, the other one is tough. Like, as far as a performance, a true performance goes, Honestly, anything Sondheim. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. I mean, 100%. I've been in a Sondheim musical. I was Rapunzel in Into the Woods, and it was awesome, and I got squished off stage. <laughs> but She did. I did. Yeah. I would really enjoy, you know, maybe more of... Maybe the, not, you know, maybe not an off-stage death. The whole time, which is never a given in a Sondheim show, but... Yeah, I just, ah, uh, yeah. Just for sheer musicality, I love Sondheim so much because he never talked down to his audience musically. And he put together incredibly musically com complex musicals with lots of callbacks and lots of different key changes, sometimes in the same song. You know, super, it doesn't, it never felt like I was in front of people, because if you're, it's different if you're acting. I have a harder time knowing that I'm going to speak to people, in my own words, but, you know, when I, I've been in a ton of musicals, and a ton of plays, but the going out on stage you're not going out as yourself so there's a layer of separation which really really helps i think for me at least um you don't 
you don't have to go out there and be loved or hated for you. You're going out there and being loved or hated as X character. Now, someone could hate your performance, but that's still different. Like, they're not hating you. They're just hating what happened that night. How do you dance and learn all the steps? Okay, so Corvus, that actually is an interesting question, and I should let Alice answer that more, but I've done a whole lot of dancing in my time, too. Um, practice is huge. Learning choreography is a skill more than it is a talent. <laughs> Aww, super. I bet it was great. You're adorable. How, how do you... No. I, I, I suspect it was a lot better than you thought. But, um, the, the steps in, I mean, it really is practice. How much dancing have you done, Corvus? Because it's really, it's hard if, you know, you're in your first year of dancing or something like that. Because it's just, at that point, you're, you're still thinking too much. And when you are a very experienced dancer, Nancy, it is, it Hi. is, like, it is like learning language, but, but Nancy, wouldn't you agree that if you study language a lot, it becomes a whole lot easier to learn new languages, right? So if you, oh, you had to perform for PE class. We did that too, actually. I, uh, in kindergarten, we did a square dance for an assembly and my partner was the boy I had a crush on in kindergarten, John Metcalf. He was very cute. He was always tan because he had melanin and I did not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, you can, choreography is very difficult for a lot of people, but I honestly believe that 90% of it, not 100%, or even 99%, 90% of it is practice. Because you have to get the vocabulary down before you can do the choreography part. Like if you, if you are not familiar with the steps first, then you can't turn it into shorthand in your head. Like, if you're doing ballet choreography for the first time, and you're like, or not ballet, but just any choreography for the first time, then you you have to go through every single step. You can't just group them into, oh, this is a grapevine and do this turn. You have to go, okay, forward, back, forward, back, forward, <laughs> into turn toward my right elbow. <laughs> But if you are well versed in all the underlying vocabulary, it is very much like language, Nancy. Thank you. Um, if you're uh, if you're well versed in all the underlying vocabulary, then absolutely you have an advantage. So it's it's practice, it's learning, and it's not talent, it's skill. And it's easier for some people than it is for others. Allison, did you want to weigh in? Since I just Stomped all over that for you. I, I, do people want to hear from me? Yes. I would say that the facility to learn the vocabulary and then the facility to learn the phrases that are made up of the vocabulary is a little bit of a gift and a lot of it of a skill and a lot of it of training and practice. Um, you know, just the way that memorizing monologues, some people can do it, some people can't, no matter how, or some people have more difficulty no matter how much training they have. So, you know, I would say there's a facility for, for absorbing that knowledge, part of which is talent, you know, whatever, you know, 10% inspiration, 90% perspiration. Like if you've got the base talent, you still have to put in the work in order to get the underlying vocabulary. And then it is, you know, language is a really great metaphor because literally 
series of movements in concert dance, we call them phrases. You're literally stringing together all of the words mm -hmm. of the dance in your head. It's a little more interesting in modern dance because there aren't, I mean, in ballet, there are, in jazz, there are names for a lot of things. Like this is a tondu, this is, you know, a pirouette. Oh, when you're in modern dance, it's a very free form vocabulary. So there you're kind of essentially making your own words in your head. Like this is the swooshy swoosh and mm -hmm. this is the carving motion and the contraction, which goes into the spin. And, you know, so you are making up your own language at that point in your head. Um, then I do the baseball catch and then. Yes, yeah. but. Thinking about it as a language and breaking it down to the, the base steps and what they're called is definitely, I think, a really good way to get more comfortable with learning. I mean, I will say that my problem was never, you know, and the, the more I danced, the more distorted vocabulary I had in my head, the better I got at it. But my problem was never choreography, it was imp improvisation, making interesting improvisational choices. It took me until <laughs> college to be good at that. I don't think I ever got good at that. Well, okay, social dancing is. But like, I'm terrible with social dancing. I mean, I'm not terrible, but I'm not grand. You've seen me social dance. Like, because- You haven't practiced it as much exactly. as I have. I'm not familiar with that. Cause social dancing isn't, social dancing is a conversation. Yes, it is. It's Absolutely. not, it's not a phrase. It's not a monologue. It's a conversation. Yes. And, and sometimes concert dance is a conversation, but it's a scripted conversation. Yes. It's a conversation where everybody knows what everyone else is doing at all times. Whereas social dancing, like Heather um, did a ton of amazing swing dancing, blues dancing. Like you should see this girl on the dance floor before her knees failed her. Like she was hot shit. I, I can and, still and, do a dance or two and then pay for it. And so. I was the sad tag along person who was like, I want to dance, but I don't know any of this stuff. Like, and it was really funny because one night there was a, we did a, a blues improvisation circle and it was just like a single person like get in the center like like you do at school dances only cooler because we were older and we'd been drinking yeah. some of the people at school dances had been well too. that's fair but i was just I, never invited to that nor would i have gone but i i did a whole improvisation and like every not everyone but tim um senior in particular I me, yeah he's like i didn't know you could do that I'm like, well, because this is my thing. Yeah. That other thing upstairs, not so much my thing. I mean, like bar dancing, that's a different, you know, that's just like, you know, booty, 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 rocking everywhere. That's that's a different flavor of social dancing. Social We're, dance. Okay. So the the dance in particular that I started doing as a social dance, super, sorry, don't mean to interrupt Allison. I'm going to just say You're fine. Go for move, it. Move back on to Allison. It's okay. Um. I started doing Lindy Hop, which originated in Harlem ballrooms back in the 30s. Um, obviously not from people who look like me. So we definitely just flat out stole all of the, the awesomeness, but I definitely danced it because I appreciated it and wanted to be part of it. <laughs> Dancing. Um, it, and yeah, so swing dancing is an overarching term for several different dances that actually occurred during the swing era in music. Um, so swing era was, depending on when you start counting swing dancing, um, a lot of people start counting with the Charleston era, so 20s through the 40s, or like just through World War II and a little bit after. Um, and interestingly, one of the things that started to kill social dancing was cabaret laws in New York City, where if you were an establishment 
who sold alcohol, you could not have dancing there. So the cabaret laws started to absolutely murder the social dancing scene. And that was in, I can't remember exactly when the social, when the cabaret laws came into existence, but um, the, you know, your parents or grandparents who were around in the 40s and 50s, sometime in the 50s, that's when the social dancing really stopped because it was no longer allowed. Like there was, there was a concerted effort to shut it down because, and this, it all comes back to racism, um, because movements that black bodies did were inherently sexual. Does not matter whether they were or not, but there was a lot of panic from fundam fundy white people who were like, we can't have our children doing this. So they made it stop. They found a way to make it stop. They tried a lot of different ways and nothing worked. I mean, they tried prohibition. That was part of it, but they finally managed to do it. Um, but yeah, Lindy Hop, Blues Dancing, Charleston, Balboa, Foxtrot, um, which technically isn't a swing dance, but was absolutely done to swing music when it began. That's, yeah. Anyway, Allison, carry on, I'm sorry. It's okay, I can't remember where I was carrying. Okay, well you so. were just talking about how awesome you were. To come out dancing I was not. I was talking about how That's I was your sad, sad, sad tag along watching you swish your hips, and I, I can't swish my when hips. I couldn't even do a swing out. But um, well, no, a swing out is a, it's difficult. Um, though I finally realized that that Lindy Hop and West Coast Swing are very similar steps, are, just at a very different tempo. Yeah, they're. They, it only took me 12 years to, no, not 12. I learned West Coast Swing like 20 years ago. Really? It only took me 20 years I to figure that out. Yeah. Coast, I would have just told you. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, do West Coast Swing, but with a little more bounce into the ground. <laughs> yeah. Now, I had a um, boyfriend in college, and his mom was really big into, unfortunately, she was really into um, Arthur Murray Ballroom, which ah. that's a that whole business models a little problematic, but um, when he would take me to visit, she would take us to dance classes with her. Fun. So yeah, we learned, I learned West Coast Swing when I was in college. There was a, a class at my college where, and this tells you how long ago it was, um, there were certain classes, because you, you had to go the first day to actually get into the class. Um, and in some classes that were really, really popular, it was the first ex people who got in the door. Uh -huh. So we would sleep out for classes like you would for concert tickets. Cause giant nerd right here. That's, that's me. Um, there was a class on campus because the, the dance department had ballet and modern and things like that, but their dance department was pretty much made up of social dance experts and not the ballroom kind, like mm -hmm. people who learned Argentine tango in the streets of Argentina, not in a ballroom at all. Like, so experts in authentic and authentic. historically accurate yeah. social dancing. Mm -hmm. Well, was there anybody there who did like historically accurate, um, like, I'm going to say historically accurate, historical dancing. That's yes, ridiculous. But like, absolutely. you know, dancing from the 1700s. And yes. 1800s. Waltzing and, and all kinds of other social well, dances. And like all that. of the figure dances, which yes. is so freaking fun. Yes. That was entirely That's what they cool. were about. They were about, um, shoot, what's the word that I'm completely missing? I don't Not know. Just social dancing. It has none words. But anyway, there was 
there was a class called Argentine Tango and Swing. And it was Lindy Hop and it was Argentine Tango. And oh my gosh, that did like fun. people sleep out for that. Um, you know, at some point you would you'd stop sleeping out for it because they they take a certain number of people in the class and then they would also have a wait list but you know if you're like number 150th in line then you're not going to get in the class um but we also had uh and alice you would have absolutely just died over this dance every year there was another there was a dance that you would sleep out for tickets for huh? called the Beanie's Ball. And the Beanie's Ball had two rooms, one of which was Beanie's Waltz and Polka, uh -huh. and one of which was Swing. Oh, how fun. And they had bands, and, you know, in the the waltz room, you know, they actually had the, the orchestra up in the balcony, like you really would have in a ballroom uh -huh. back in the day. But yeah, Viennese Waltz, oh, I could do Viennese Waltz for the rest of my life, every single day, and only miss swing dancing a little bit. <laughs> Cause it's like flying. Yeah, I will say I actually like, I've always been like a super allegro person. So like polka, I love polka. Polka's so fun. It's so fun. Oh. And if you do that every day for the rest of your life, you will be in the best cardio shape of yes. anybody. Because holy macaroni. To polka. I could totally do that. I think I could still do polka with my knees. That's fair. Because there's a whole lot of momentum. <laughs> that is true. I will say that the, my only problem is typically that the only time I used to have the opportunity to opportunity to do polka was wearing a full Victorian ball gown and a full Victorian corset. And since polka is very aerobic, <laughs> you know, and I mean, let me say like corsets are not supposed to, you know, really confine you as much as, as the lore <laughs> states. But here's the thing. Like? Here's the thing about when you wear a corset once a year and corsets, are not cheap like well-made victorian corsets like there's a there are a number of people who make them they're not cheap so if you've expanded between last year's event and this year's event typically you don't find out until it's time to put your stuff on they're like oh. <laughs> so um i would definitely enjoy polka more i think in modern clothes than in my victorian rig but it's still so damn fun in the Victorian rig. And then there was the one time where there were three of us and we, and there were no men dancing. So we just all three polkaed in a circle and then managed to like pivot it all around and turn it into a kick line wow. coming down the dance floor. That was oh, fun. Oh, I love it. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone have another question? Cause we've talked about dance for a long time. We definitely it's, have. Yeah. Obviously both of us could continue to talk we about could. dance until we pass out. But. Okay, so it's 8.58, so we'll take one more question, I think, and then um, work on the process of heading home. I actually think I'm going to take my epoxy party home with me. Okay. Because I just realized that I have, I have resin at home, so. <laughs> yes, we are definitely both dancers we are, to our core. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I once had, I once had a friend say to me there's no such thing as an ex dancer there are dancers who don't dance anymore but once you're a dancer like if you're a true dancer you're always a dancer i i just can't do all of the stuff anymore lordy mercy neither can i especially not with my busted ass foot now right super you want me to send you a link to something of me dancing See, there are, okay, so I'm amazed that there's something of you dancing, because all, but though you continued, because I, I retired in, oh God, when the hell did I retire? I was 25. When was I 25? 
Good God. <laughs> 2006. No, I retired in 2006. So, you want, so, I don't want to spam you. so uh, you know, all of the, I don't know that you can, because all of the all of the records of me dancing are on VHS tapes that are like getting dusty in someone's closet. I have a couple of photos, and somewhere in my world there's a scrapbook that I made, like just of like newspaper clippings and things, but. Honestly, I don't know if there is any footage of me dancing that is accessible via the internet. I, that would be some, that would take some research to figure that out. Because cause I, you know, I quit. Well, but I don't have any of the VHSs. VHSs, they're all, they all belong to other people. I will, I'll email my friend Tony. Um, she's the one who produced my last professional performance. I mean, she she produced the last professional performance I was in. I was not, you know, it wasn't my performance. It was her show. Um, but, um, oh, wow, yeah, I don't even know. Because it's been a hot minute. Not all of the videos of me dancing are available because YouTube takes things down sometimes. Um, but I'll often do. I will do some research. I'll, do I'll do some research on the interwebs, and I will see if anything is out there. So, do you want super? Do you want the better performance, or do you want the stockier performance? Because I've got there. One, two, three, four, five. I think there are five available, which is a lot. Because, again, I have not. <laughs> yes, we absolutely will. Okay. <laughs> I promised one of my friends um, the saucy video once he finally got a, a level 44 lair solo and he did it the other night and he immediately was like, so come see the proof. I want my prize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to te text goat cheese and it keeps Correcting it to goat sneeze. Kenneth, let me check. Goat what? Goat sneeze. That sounds cute. That's not something I want on my pizza, though. No. No. You're getting pizza? Apparently. We do not have flesh cutters in stock, Kenneth. But we can get some for you. Yes, we absolutely can. But um, you should... So, so my soapbox about good flush cutters is you should replace them with better and you should also replace them with a cheap one. And you should use the cheap one for your heavier gauge wires and the things that are going to dull out your cutter and save your nice flush cutter for the things that you really need it for, like your 26 and 28 gauge wire, yeah. your stringing cable, things like that. Like most of us here have two or three. I carry three cutters. Yeah. So actually for a while carried four until my middle niece was like, Do you have any wire cutters I could borrow for robotics? I was like, Hey, why didn't you keep this old pair for yeah. robotics? Because you're doing robotics and that's super cool and I wanna be part of that. Seriously, my middle niece she is so much cooler than I will ever be. Same with, actually, same with all my nieces. So much cooler than I will ever be. But Lauren still thinks I'm some kind of superstar because I'm on YouTube. And I'm on YouTube a lot. <laughs> Let's see. What, uh, what are some, okay. Actually, okay, I have to say, can I just, can I steal this thread for just a second? Do it. I'm loony. Okay. At the jewelry studio where I'm currently consulting, there's a pair of Swanstrom micro 
flesh cutters, they're sexier than Tromax. What? They're amazing. I have no idea, but I'm about to look at it. Look it up. Okay, so I'm looking at it. So do I. Since I haven't seen my Tromax in a month. Um. Like they're freaking amazing. Like, actually, I've decided whenever we, whenever we're doing well again, I'm getting myself a whole set of Swanstrom pliers. So, Corvus, my favorite pliers, and I'll get to cutters in a minute, and I will share the link. But my favorite pliers are Swanstrom, um, which is actually, I believe, an American brand. Yeah, Swanstrom Tools USA. Um, and the reason that I like them is because they have a, okay, they have a full handle tang. So the tang is the part of the pliers that goes down into the handle. And like, even the nice ones like these, it doesn't go all the way down. And so they snap much more quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then you have floppy pliers and then you have, you have pliers that don't work. So I'll share the link to those. Uh, and then... Hold on, you're with me. I'm gonna share that in Discord and then I'm gonna find the cutters because the cutters are separate because I'm pretty sure the cutters uh, by themselves cost like half as much as that, as that entire plier set, but I want them so badly. Good cutters cost more. Good cutters are worth every penny. They are as long as you take care of them. Yes. Don't I still have the same pair of Tronex that I started with when I bought them in 2010. The only reason that I don't is because I made the mistake of bringing them here and they got broken. And then I got Rachel's Tronax and I don't know what happened to them. You had to give them to your mom. Oh, right, I did. That's what happened. Because your mom is deserving of all the good things. She is. Like, for you to Just ask her. I'm still looking. Bye, Supergirl. Bye, Thank Supergirl. you. We'll be wrapping up shortly. I just yeah, need to I'll find be on the game later. And so, so this is a different Swanstrom cutter than what we have. It's better. Obviously, okay. I'm I'm Super sorry. Super those Super those just look like they need a big truck. What the heck is that for? <laughs> Where Any woman who doesn't appreciate tools, I just want to take her aside and fix her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, look. They're amazing. Tools are the best. Tools are the best. Like... Which is how I know you're really not into the permanent jewelry thing. Because <laughs> it's an excuse for a new tool and you don't have it. <laughs> I know budgetary things too, but we always find a way. All right. These are the Swanstrom Micro Super Flush Cutters. So I can get them for anybody who wants them on the stream for $70. <sighs> they are sweet and sexy and they make the most beautiful cuts. I like, know what I'm asking for for Christmas. Like they're just like cutting 26 gauge jump rings so I can laser weld them without having to file them. Like, wow, they're amazing. So you I will- can, You can laser weld 26 gauge jump rings without filing them? Yeah, if you use the sexy cutters. I hate you and I love you. And also the laser and the sexy cutters. Yeah. Hey, guess how many looms I did? How many? All of them! Yay! Hey, that makes it a good time yeah. for us to be done. I will put the um, cutters link up 
after I, okay, next update, first pliers. You do need, I mean, I'm, I, I oftentimes waffle between a, you know, a poor craftsman blames his tools attitude and the fact that good tools really do make a difference. So, you know, yes, you need cool tools to make cool stuff. Absolutely. All right. I need to drill these before I go home. So if you don't see me drilling things, that's a bad thing. And okay. I need to get the chains out of the tumbler. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to organize my life. And then, okay. So I think it is a good breaking time. Thank you all so much for hanging out on the Ask Us Anything stream. This was really fun. It was. And you we should do well. it again. Yeah. So. Like maybe once a month. Yeah. Or something. Absolutely. Um, but so we are, we're going to be out for the night tomorrow is going to be a sale, which is going to be mostly 50% with a tiny bit of cool new stuff that you haven't seen yet. So, which is 25%, which is 25% off. So I will do my best to post photos on discord of some ca product categories, um, so that you guys can pick what you want to see tomorrow night. Uh, but for now we are going to head out and we will see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash feeding dream tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. I have this fight with my mother about when the sale is. It's at 6.30, not 6, okay? Just saying. Her mom wins for, this, for the calendar, but, but we get to choose when we go on stream. It's true. So we'll be back, twitch.tv forward slash feeding dream tomorrow at... That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, tomorrow at 6.30. So, bye, y'all. Bye.